Hi guys, James here from Plumber Parts Code UK. Bit of a weird video this week because uh, I've just been so flat out and I've not actually been all that well. I've bloody lurgy that's going about. Number one I want to say, these t-shirts are now on sale. So I'll leave a link at the end of the video in the cards for you to click on, but I'll also leave a link in the description below so you'll be able to buy those. They're on sale now, they come with a lovely special silver plumber sticker that you can put in your toolbox or on your hand or wherever you like. Even around your willy, it's up to you. So this video today isn't really about anything in particular, it's more just you guys following us while I take this awful old tank out that's got a compromised coil and for you apprentices as well it's a good opportunity for us to have a look at this system in particular and just look at it and say what is this, what is that, how you trace out a heating system uh, and all the components that are on it and how you learn about what bits you need to work on, that sort of thing. I hope you like it basically, so it's not sort of normal power parts one. I think mainly because this is quite a difficult job to do. Uh, it's not an easy changeover and therefore, you know, if I started trying to film it real close up and everything, uh, it probably wouldn't go so well. But anyway, um, follow us on Instagram. In fact, I'm going to Instagram story you guys right now, okay? So you can follow us on Instagram. I'm Instagramming you lot. Hi guys, look, look, there you go. Look, right up there, you're being Instagrammed right now in my story. So follow us on Instagram as well. Also follow us on Snapchat as well, if you'd like to Snapchat, especially over the weekend if I've had a beer, oh my God. Uh, and also follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well, uh, and just keep up with all the Plum Proud photos. That's another thing I want to tell you about very quickly actually, is we're doing this thing called Plum Proud, and it's alongside the plumbing disasters. So if you fit in anything that you're really proud of, send it over to us and I'll happily share it with all the followers that we have. Uh, and also if you're an apprentice and you've done a frame at college that you're proud of, or any work whatsoever, then send it over. I love to see your, all your work. And when you do send it, uh, just tag us at Plum Apart and put the hashtag in Plum Proud. Okay, um, so let's get on with this job and I'll see you soon. Remember everybody, to hold tech. Go a bit handheld for this. Let's identify what we've actually got on this tank itself first. So the tank is a vented indirect tank. That means that we've got a big tank in the loft, a feed tank, a cold water pipe that is coming down at the back here that as you can see I've already disconnected. That's in 28 mil and we've what we've done the valve up on the outlet of the tank which hasn't been used in ages would you believe held? Mental, isn't it? But what I might do is I'm probably gonna pop on a 28 mil lever valve on there, just down here, so if anyone else turns up, they can just shut that off there, and they know they haven't got any more problems. Um, but we've got a 28 mil hot out, then we've got hot off to the taps. There must be a hot here that is not pumped, because just out of shot down there, they've got a salamander pump here that is pumping all of the hot water and all of the cold water. What happens is, is the feed for the pump comes out of this side here on this Surrey flange. So the hot water side of things, we've got this is our feed pipe that comes out of our Surrey flange, goes into our pump, it gets pumped out, and comes up this pipe here, all the way across to there. Then that pipe goes off here and then out off to the system. Now there seems to be this sort of weird balancing valve that comes back here. I can only think that that's there if the pump fails and you can still then supply water off to the system later on. So that's probably a good thing to have there. Down here on the side of the tank, we've got our heating system coil. I've popped a lever valve on here because when I do these jobs, when I put new ones of new tanks in, I'll put a lever valve on the flow from the heating system and the return. So if there's ever a problem afterwards, the next engineer, all they need to do is just pop those two lever valves off and it means you don't have to drain the whole heating system out when you come back. It's just little things like that, okay? A lever valve's gonna cost you three or four quid, but it could cost you hours in call out time and mucking up your diary later on if you don't fit them. So I always recommend you do that. So our hot water from our heating system comes around here, goes into a coil that goes, that then transfers its heat into the hot water that you're gonna wash in. Remember those two bodies of water don't mix. And that's why we're changing this tank at the moment. It's because the coil on this is compromised. Uh, we found that out a couple of weeks ago because we were doing another job here. We drain the heating system down and then when we pop the um, hose off the bottom of the coil, we knew that the whole heating system was empty, but the pipe out of there was still running. Popped up into the loft and checked that the hot water tanks and that weren't running, and guess what, they were. Which means that the feed, so this tank here, was somehow getting into the coil that we've got down there, which means you've got a compromised coil. Um, so this is why we're doing the job today. So, so far, uh, I've popped this valve on here, I've got to pop one down there at the moment. I've slackened off everything, I've taken everything off, so I'm just going to whip this little beast out in quick motion to find the feet out. 
Right then, so you can probably see, let's lift this up, not that getting wet. Do that again. So then, as you probably see, we've got our old tank out, we've got our cold feed down the back here, that's dripping slightly. That's why I want to pop a valve on that now. Give everything a little bit of a clear up in here, and now we can start thinking about designing the new system, and also I'll show you the new tank, and we'll start working on that as well. Right, so there's the old tank out. As you can see, we've got the old feed, the old cold feeds coming down the back here and they very nicely popped a little bit of 15 mil on the drain off there so we could get at it, okay? Also, take into account as well that we've got a drain off on here. That when we put the new one in, we're gonna have to put that on there so we can drain the coil out. There's two immersion heaters on here that have never been used and there's no electricity to be able to get them to work. So we're not gonna be putting them back in. We're just gonna use a blanking plug on the new one. And as you can see, we've got a Surrey flange on here that's gonna be a hot feed for the shower pump as well. And then the, out one, the outlet at the top is normal. That is all gonna go back to the studio where I'm gonna cut it open and show you what's inside. Here we go, we've got the new one here. As you can see at the top, we've got a 28 mil uh, outlet just there. We've got our immersion heater that we're just gonna put a blank on. How about this? It doesn't get much easier than this, does it? We've already got a flange on the side of it for our shower pump, so we don't have to worry about putting that in. Then we've got our coil flow and our coil return, like that. And then if I spin this round, and then we've got our cold feed down at the bottom there as well, which for some reason, this particular manufacturer has put on the other side. Can I just say something to the manufacturers of the world of tanks? Can you please start putting your cold feed roughly around the same side like you would do with an unvented cylinder because having it around the back there like that causes problems and it, it worries me because if I've got a leak down there and I've put the tank in and everything I, I'm, I have to drain the whole lot out to get it out again so for god's sake can you just do that so we've got our 28 mil lever valve on there at the back if we have any more problems we've got control over the cold water supply uh what i'm going to do is i'm just going to whip off this little olive off this 28 mil outlet we're just going to pop on here like that do you see the way i did that just grab that with the grips just grab the olive lightly try and make sure your grips are almost exactly the same size as the olive when you set them up and then give them a little wiggle and just put your weight on it and that'll come off nice and easily it's all about prep this job so we're just going to give this a good old clean up while we can we can get to this easily at the moment can't we so we might as well give it a as good a clean as possible so yeah right let's go and get the uh, new tank sort of shuffled in here so we've got the old beast laying out here i might try and reuse this little bit so yeah it's a matter of just trying to take that off i tell you the weather out here is atrocious today is that going to come? You're going to fall off, I tell you that, aren't you? I can just tell you, you're going. <laughs> So we've roughly got the new tank in position, as you can see. So what we're gonna be able to do is cut that back there. We've also got the spigot here to put on there. It's our hot, hot water outlet. Then we've got our blanking to put on here, and then we just need to pipe all this up nice and easily as well. So basically, just watch us get on with that now. First thing I do, guys, as well, is as a precaution, get that immersion hole blocked up, okay? Because if you drop anything down there, like your pipe slice or something, <laughs> you're not gonna be very happy. You're literally gonna cry. It would make me cry anyway. I'd, uh, I'd be most upset if that happened. So usually with these, you get a nice little fiber washer on here. So make sure you get plenty of jointing compound on either side of the fiber washer before you put it on. Make sure that the face of the immersion heater as well is nice and clean. You can do that with a file or a bit of emery cloth or a scouring pad. So I always just sort of splodge plenty of this on and just really rub it on really. And then I might even put a little bit more over the actual face it's gonna meet as well. Uh, to be honest, you can't have enough stuff. And saying that as well, I always pop a little bit of PTFE around the thread. Some of you might say it's over the top, but I don't care. I don't wanna have a leak uh, in a few minutes time. It'll give me the ump. And I wanna know that it's all been done nice and correctly as well. You see I'm going backwards until I hear the click. And then once the click happens, you know you can run forwards again and that'll hopefully prevent you from cross-threading it in a minute. So many little mini videos you could do in this one big one, isn't there? Now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna leave it just nipped like this. Okay, as you can hear, listen to all that banging about in there. Right, so next up, once we've got that done, I'm just gonna get my, my nuts and olive. This is actually sort of going for this sort of job quite well at the moment because I haven't had to make ma many pipework alterations. So the gods of plumbing out there. I pray to you all the time, remember, that I don't want this job to go up the swanee, as they say. Look, as you can see, we're jointing compounding everything. We're making sure we're giving ourselves the best chance to get a really good result out of this job in a minute. This is going to be the actual position of our tank. Okay, now look at that, we're on there now. I'm just gonna do that up slightly. I think we can just probably go back a bit further. Don't hurt the tank, Jimmy. So I just wanted to see how much compound we've put on that 
Olive there because we're at a, pos a position that we can't get to very easily. Uh, so we do have any problems in the future, it's going to be a right bum hole. So we want to get as much compound on there now and then we nip it up. Oh yeah, FYI, oh, for your information, uh, I'm standing on a Makita radio at the moment as a step up because for those of you who haven't met me at trade shows or anything like that, I'm a short ass. <laughs> right, and gang, now that we've got our tank in, you might have noticed just down there we've had to put a valve on the feed to the hot water side of the pump. It's just a good thing to do, pop yourself a little valve on there. So what I'm gonna do is now get this piped up and into here, and then we'll get all the water on. That's when we wanna test for leaks at that point, uh, before we do the actual hot water coils. And also it'll give us an indication as well if you know the tank's been damaged in transit, sometimes the coils can get damaged and then, cool, I really hope not that, uh, that we have maybe another compromise between the two. Um, so let me do that now in quick motion. You guys can just watch us do that now. By the way, guys, I am going to do a review on this little tool that I'm using at the moment. This is called a fluctuator, and I haven't been using them long. Uh, they've really just sort of come out. I think some of you guys at college may have seen them because uh, they're sort of trying to get into the colleges at the moment, aren't they? And they're pretty good, actually. I mean, usability, number one, absolutely brilliant. Most important thing as well. But I just want to know how good their flux is. That's the biggest thing is they don't use like a Laco or an Everflux or anything like that. They use a different type that they make themselves. Apparently it's completely neutral. In you get your boo. Just gonna slacken this nut off here and as ever, a little bit of jointing compound on that nut and olive. So guys, I've got this little bit done in here now. Um, so we've tested a little bit up there and I'm really impressed there's no leaks at all. Um, I obviously put more solder in there than I would usually because it's a new flux I haven't used much of. But no, really impressed, nice clean solders. Um, so looking good there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pipe up the flow from our heating system S plan. So that's the part of the system that we're looking at right now on the side in the diagram. Uh, and what we're doing, we're putting a little T piece in here and then we're gonna put our automatic air vent on just here. Usually what I'd do is I'd put a valve here, then the automatic air vent, but because I've put two lever valves on the flow and return to the coil already, there's a problem with the air vent, we can just knock them two off and the air vent will easily be sort of changed over and worked on then. So we'll just do that now and then we'll get down as well, nice and low and do the return as well. Said a couple of times in the past, guys, try to make everything you do look as good as possible. So if anyone opens that up, that cupboard and goes, oh, like you want them to say, who worked there? Can I have their number? Because that, that is special and they care. Uh, obviously, my first time using this flux, so some of my solders are a bit random, but so that's why you can see a couple of flick offs. But you know, it's, oh, it's one of them things, isn't it? You know, seriously, your boss sees you do this, he's going to go absolutely mental. He'll be like, wow, you guy. You are good. Because it's fast, so it will stay this shiny. Right, and guys, now I've got all the pipe work done. I've actually got this open already, this two port valve. I've got both these valves open, and we're now actually heating the water back up again. Tested for leaks, we've got no leaks. Funny enough, we do have a couple of leaks on this little pump here that have been basically caused by the fact that we've been moving the pipe work when we've done the job, and that's gonna be one we have to come back to, the slow weeps. So we're gonna to have to get some new flexies for that in 22 mil and get that done. So now, what I've gotta do is basically, it's a nice easy job really. I get myself uh, my wheel little pen, and I'm going to fit back on my little stat. Uh, always try and put my stat roughly halfway down. Uh, I like to put just, oh bloody hell, that pipe's hot. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to put my bat just down there and I'm just going to draw around that quickly like so. Uh, I put mine halfway down purely because then it will get a nice accurate reading or as accurate as it possibly can uh, of what our coil outlet output is. Uh, so I'm just going to pop that in there now. Um, I'll put that in, I'll see you in a sec. So then guys, the whole job's done. I'm absolutely chuffed with how it's all gone and also found out along the way that Chris, my customer, is a filthy old git. He is gonna kill me for that. Man, I'm so sorry. By the way, Chris is the guy who helps me do all the work on the website, so he's not, he's definitely gonna see this. Um, I've gotta say, mate, you might be a dirty old git, but you do have impeccable taste, I'll give you that. But anyway, the whole job's finished now, and I'm really, really pleased with how it's all turned out. 
Um, it's great that we have left this system so if there's any more problems than anyone else ever comes here, they're able to valve stuff off without having to drain the whole heating system down. They're able to isolate components that may be problems within the heating system and things like that as well. And also, we've grassoed all our pipes up so we know that they're gonna stay nice and clean as well after we've left, they're not gonna tarnish for a long, long time. Uh, we've got drain offs where we need them and we've also used that lovely new fluctuator as well which I'm definitely going to do a review on back in the studio when we get a set along with that big tank that we've taken out as well. Guys in two seconds time there's going to be a link for you to buy some plumber tops okay there's not many of them so get in there while you can. We're also sending them out with some quality silver plumber stickers that you can stick on all your toolboxes or on your van or whatever like that so try to get in there guys it'd be really really cool if you could buy some t-shirts and just live up the, the beastly love. Obviously, everyone has different ways of doing jobs and different ways of overcoming situations like this and doing this properly. Uh, this is my particular way with this particular job. If I was gonna do this three days ago in exactly the same place, I might have done it differently, you never know. Don't see it as the be all and end all, just see it as an indicative, you just looking over my shoulder as I did the job and also hopefully giving you a few diagrams along the way so you can understand when you see something laid out schematically uh, on a flat bit of paper, you can now actually see it, what it's like when it's just a jumbled mess of pipes and wires. If you need any more help, any more information, please let us know, comment and like, follow us on Instagram, please follow us on Snapchat as well, Follow us on Facebook and Twitter too, and send us in your Plum Proud photos. Hashtag Plum Proud, and then tag at Plumber Parts. Then I'll see it, and if I think it's good enough, or if I love it, or if, you know, if I haven't got hang over that day, I might share it, you never know. We are gonna start rolling out prizes for that soon. Uh, I just wanna build up all these photos first, so that'd be really cool. So anyway, thanks ever so much for watching, guys, and remember to hold tap. See you later. Bruh.